Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Welcome to Shabbat Service for Waymaker Messianic Jewish and Christian Center USA. We welcome everyone who is here with us today and for those who will listen in later on the archives as well. We pray that this is a blessing to each and every one of you. Well, this is the recording for Saturday, June 3rd, 2023 on the Gregorian calendar and on the Hebrew calendar. It is Sivan 14, the year 5783, and this is the day that the Lord has made. We will be glad and rejoice in it. We have a couple announcements for the upcoming week. But for today, uh, just to to remind everybody, um, this is the first Shabbat for the month of June. So we will be having Holy Communion in the second segment of Shabbat service today. We also are continuing our Bible study this week, and we are reading currently through the English Standard Version of the Bible. We will be completing the Gospel of Mark, reading chapters 9 through 16 in this upcoming week. Also, Tuesday evenings um, for our free conference call.com meetings at 8 p.m., we are now um, doing a class uh, called Hearing from God. And... um, we have been engaged in that this will be the third week. There is still time if you have not registered with me let me to let me know that you want to take the class to to get in and we can catch you up um but probably after this upcoming week it's not it's not gonna we're not gonna be able to do that because we're gonna get too far far gone in the class. But you're will you're you're more than welcome to to sit in. This is our live session that we we have, and we do lift up prayer requests. So, if you cannot attend and you have prayer requests, we always lift up prayer requests um, on Tuesday evenings, and we we have been doing them at the end of uh, at the end of the session. So, to join, you would join by phone or by web address. I do post to four social media platforms how to do that. Um, and there's drop down menus for um, for the phone, phone access. Um, you would have to find your country's phone number uh, on that list and then dial the access code. And all those numbers, regardless of what it, it, that it says there's toll, they, it even says toll on the USA is there. This is the free list that they have given to us. Now, if you want to join by by web address, you can you can do that as well. Um, that is set up exactly like an online classroom. So you would download the the, the web app and then follow the prompts into the classroom, and that's how you can join. So yes, we will be engaged in in this class for quite for quite some time. So um, again, if you you know, please, if you have any prayer requests, you can certainly leave me a message, uh, and we will definitely lift up those prayer requests for you. Well, that is really all the announcements I have for this week. I can't. We're, we're in the month of June. This is our halfway point for the for the year. I can't believe. Uh, just feels like we begin this year, and here we are in June already. So um, without further ado, we're going to continue with opening Shabbat service with prayer. Avina Malkina, our Father, our King, we thank you. We just thank you so much for today. And today is the day that you sanctified us holy, a day called Sabbath. And you showed us perfectly, perfectly by example when you created everything in six days and you rested on the seventh day. The beginning of the week is Sunday. That's our first day of the week. Our seventh day of the week is Saturday. This is the day that you have sanctified as holy. This is is the Sabbath. And we are here to honor you, Father God. We're here to honor this day and to be in your presence. And being in your presence is just so humbling. We ask your Holy Spirit to come lead us, guide us, direct us, show us what we need to grasp in this week's Shabbat service through the Torah, the Haftorah, and the Brit Kadashah. 
Father God, we thank you for everything that you have done, all that you're doing and all that you're about to do. We give you all our praise. And all honor and glory belong to you. And we pray this prayer in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. Amen and Amen. Exodus chapter 20, beginning with verse 8. It says, remember Yom Shabbat to keep it holy. You are to work six days and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Shabbat to Adonai your God. In it you shall not do any work, not you, nor your son, your daughter, your male servant, your female servant, your cattle, nor the outsider that is within your gates. For in six days that and I made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. Thus Ed and I blessed Yom Shabbat and made it holy. And say with me now the Lord's greatest commandment, and that actually can be found if you're if you're following along, um, can be found in Deuteronomy chapter six, be, beginning with verse four. Here, O Israel, Adonai is our is our God. Adonai is one. Shema Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad, Baruch Shem Kevod Machuto Leolam Vayed. Again, here, O Israel, Adonai our is our God. Adonai is one. Blessed is the name of his glorious kingdom for all eternity. Yeshua stated the second greatest commandment, and that is, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And the rest of the, the Shema on, in Deuteronomy um, also is, and you shall love Adonai your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These words which I am commanding you today are to be on your heart. You are to teach them diligently to your children and speak of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down and when you rise up. Find them as a sign on your hand. They are to be as front loads between your eyes and write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. And that is found in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 5 to 9. Now, we use the Messianic Jewish Family Bible Tree of Life version uh, for Shabbat services. Um, so it may read differently if you're using a different, you know, it, it may have uh, the name um, of Adonai may, may be stated the Lord in, in, in different versions of the Bible. Um, so just, just so you know, this is the version that we use every week. And again, the second greatest commandment, Yeshua said, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. He said the entire Torah and the prophets hang on these two commandments. Stay with me now, the Amidah standing before God. We're going to do three of the blessings. The first blessing is the patriarchs. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God and God of our fathers, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob, the great, mighty, and awesome God, God most high, who bestows loving kindness and creates all, who remembers the kindnesses of the fathers and brings a redeemer to their descendants for the sake of his name in love, King, helper, Savior, and shield. Blessed are you, Adonai, shield of Abraham. The second greatest, the, the, the second blessing is God's might. You are mighty forever, Lord, giving life to the dead. Great is your saving power. He sustains the living with steadfast love and with great compassion gives life to the dead. He upholds the fallen, heals the sick, sets the captives free, and keeps faith with those who sleep in the dust. Who is like you, Master of Might, and who can compare with you, O, o King? who brings death, restores life, and causes salvation to flourish. You are faithful to revive the dead. Blessed are you, Adonai, who gives life to the dead. And the third blessing is Kedusha, holiness. You are holy, and your name is holy, and holy ones praise you every day. Blessed are you, Adonai, the holy God. Matavu, how lovely, how lovely are your tents, O Jacob, and your dwellings, O Israel. Because of your great loving kindness, I will bow down towards your holy temple in awe of you. Adonai, I love the house where you live, the place where your glory dwells. As for me, I will bow in worship. I will kneel before Adonai, my maker. As for me, my prayer to you, Adonai, 
is for a time of favor, O oh God, in your great love, answer me with the truth of your salvation. In Ex Kayim, the Tree of Life Declaration, we say this of the Torah. It is a tree of life to those who grasp it, and happy are those who cling to it. Its ways are ways of pleasantness, and all its paths are shalom. Bring us back to you, Adonai, and we will return. Renew our days as of old. Ayam hahu in that day. And it is said, Adonai will then be king over all the earth. In that day, Adonai will be Akkad, and his name Akkad. And Akkad means one or a composite oneness. May God's great name be magnified and sanctified, amen, in the world that he created by his will. And may he establish his kingdom, cause salvation to sprout, and may he bring the Messiah closer, amen, in your lifetime and in your days and within the lifetime of the entire house of Israel. Speedily and soon and say, Amen. May his great name be blessed forever and ever. Blessed and praised and glorified and exalted, extolled and honored, uplifted and lauded be the name of the Holy One. Blessed be he who is beyond all blessing and song, praise and consolation spoken in the world and say, Amen. May there be abundant peace from heaven and life upon us and upon all Israel and say, Amen. May he who makes peace in his heights make peace upon us and upon all Israel and say amen and the blessing of messiah baruch ata adonai eloheinu melech haolam asher naten lanu devar hakayim mashiach yeshua blessed are you adonai our god king of the universe who has given us the word of life messiah yeshua say with me now messiah's prayer our father in heaven sanctified be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In the Shehekienu, Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Shehekienu, Vekiamanu, Vehegianu, Lazman Haze. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has granted us life, sustained us, and enabled us to reach this occasion of a brand new Gregorian calendar month of June. And in the ancient days, the high priest sounded the shofar to gather Benai Israel to worship. And we're going to sound a shofar now. <laughs> Now, for those who have been following our ministry, you know we do not incorporate songs in the recordings for part one and part two of Shabbat service. However, praise and worship is extremely important. It's one of the most important elements of service because we're created to praise and worship the King. And and we will be doing that. Uh, we will be doing that in eternity. We will be we will be praising and worshiping in heaven. So Amen. Amen. So uh, we. this is why we do take time to pause. Um, the reason being when we started doing online recordings, there were so many issues and we just established that we were not going to do that because uh, we watched a lot of people losing their platforms over things like that. And so we just decided uh, not to do that. And um, I know now they allow you to do disclaimers, uh, but we have not we have not changed any anything in our format at this point. Now there's a positive touch to this. Uh, when I do post to the four social media platforms, I usually begin with posting scripture, uh, the scripture that we're going to cover for today's services, and then I will post a series of songs, and then post part one and part two of Shabbat service to both YouTube and Rumble because we have uh, we have people uh, tuning in from both platforms there as well as the four social media platforms. And then I will post another series of songs. So, of course, the first series, you know, are suggestions for uh, part one. The second are suggestions for part two. The beauty of this is you're clicking on uh, two 
that that uh, song and, it, and you're being redirected right to the artist's YouTube channel. So so they're getting credit for you and uh, listening to their songs on their channel, which is which is a plus actually. Um because many of them, many of them are actually monetized and they do get paid through YouTube. So we want to support them in any way that we can. This is their calling for the kingdom. Um, those that are in in music and and bringing us highly anointed songs. So we want to support them in any way that we can. So take a look around at their YouTube channel as well. I'm sure you're going to find many other songs that you're going to enjoy uh, because, yes, they are there. And um, many of these artists that I actually use are independent artists. They're not attached to labels. Some are, some aren't. Um, but uh, the other the other thing that I want to mention is many of them do have hyper, blue hyperlinks that you can click on to and, and that that it that will direct you on to how you can actually purchase their music. So if you have the ability to support them, by all means, please do. Uh, that keeps them doing what they do for the kingdom of God. And, and that's um, a beautiful way that we can work with them on that because we are all part of one body of Messiah working together. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to pause it now for you to listen uh, to, to, listen to uh, praise and worship uh, the suggested songs or if you have your own that's fine but this is the time that we're going to do praise and worship and um, when you have done that push play and we will continue with the tour portion and the half tour portion for this segment okay this week is parashat naso nice or uh, it's spelled N-A-S-O, or some spell it N-A-S-S-O, and that translates to elevate, or take up, or lift up. So the Torah portion that we're going to be reading today is from the Book of Numbers. We're back onto the Book of Numbers now that uh, uh, the Shavuot holiday is over. Um, and we're beginning with Numbers chapter 4, verse 21, and we will continue all the way through chapter 7 to verse 89. Parashat Nasso. Again, Adonai spoke to Moses saying, take a census also of the sons of Gershon by their ancestral households and by their families. Count all the males from 30 to 50 years of age, everyone coming to work in the service of the tent of meeting. This is the task of the Gershonite families in a working and carrying burdens. They are to carry the curtains of the tabernacle, the tent of meeting, its covering, the outer covering of corpus high, the curtains for the entrance for the tent of meeting, the curtains surrounding the courtyard and the altar, the curtain for the entrance, the ropes, and all the equipment used in its operations. They are to do all that needs to be done with these things. Now, remember um, last week we were, um, um, some of these, um, tasks were, were being addressed. The redemption also of the firstborn, the prep, preparing the sanctuary to move, um, and all of those things. So now we're getting into some of the, the duties from each of the, um, the three sections of, uh, of the Levite tribe. The sons of, Gers of the Gershonites are to do all their tasks whether carrying or doing other work according to the word of Aaron and his sons, you are to assign to them all that is their responsibility to carry. This is the duty of the families of the sons of the Gershonites regarding the tent of meeting. Their duty will be under the direction of Ithamar, son of Aaron the Kohen. Next, count the sons of Merari according to their families and their ancestral houses. Sons, 30 years old and upward to 50, everyone coming to work in the service of the tent of meeting. This is their task in the service of the tent of meeting. The frames of the tabernacles, its crossbars, posts, and bases, as well as the posts of the surrounding courtyard, plus their bases, tent pegs, ropes, and all their paraphernalia with everything related to their operation, assigned to them by name, their duties and tasks. This is the service of the families of the sons of Merari, as they work under the direction of Ithamar, son of Aaron, the Kohen. 
to Moses, Aaron, and the princes of the community counted the sons of the, the Kohathites according to their families and their ancestral households, all the men who came to do the service of the tent of meeting from 30 to 50 years of age were counted by families 20, 2,750, 2,750. This is the total of those in the families of the Kohathites, everyone serving in the tent of meeting. Moses and Aaron counted them according to the mouth of Adonai by Moses' hand. The sons of Gershon were counted according to their families and their ancestral households, males from 30 years old and upward to 50, all those coming into the work of the service of the tent of meeting, numbers numbered according to their families and ancestral households, 2,630. These were the those counted from the family to the sons of Gershon, each serving in the tent of meeting. Moses and Aaron counted according to the mouth of Adonai. Those were counted from the families and ancestral households of the sons of Merari, from 30 years of age upward to 50, who came to work at, of, of the service of the tent of meeting, numbered by their families. They were 3,200. These were those numbered from the families of the sons of Merari by Moses and Aaron in accordance with the mouth of Adonai by Moses' hand. Thus Moses, Aaron, and the princes of Israel counted all the Levites by their families and by their ancestral houses. All the men from 30 to 50 years old who came to do the work of the service of and of carrying the tent of meeting numbered 8,580. From the mouth of Adonai by Moses' hand, each man was assigned his work and his burden to carry, so they were counted as Adonai commanded Moses. Chapter 5, Purity in the Camp. Adonai spoke to Moses, saying, Command Benai Israel to send out from the camp. Everyone was that a rote. Now, that a rote is a Hebrew word, word for leprosy, who has some kind of discharge or any contaminated by a dead body. Whether male or female, you are to, to send them outside the camp so as not to defile the camp where I am dwelling among them. This Benai Israel did, sending them outside the camp, just as Adonai spoke to Moses, so Benai did. Benai Israel did. Adonai spoke to Moses, saying, Say to Benai Israel, Whenever a man or a woman commits any sins against any person, thus breaking faith with Adonai, that soul, soul bears guilt. That person is to confess the sin, he has committed, make full restitution for his wrong, add one-fifth to it, and give it to the one he wronged. But if that person has no close relative to whom to pay the restitution, the restitution belongs to Adonai. It is to be given to the Kohen, along with the ram of atonement with which he is to make atonement for him. Every contribution from all the sacred things that Benai Israel brings to the Kohen will belong to him. Each one's sacred holy gifts are his own. But whatever each man gives to the Kohen belongs to that Kohen. Jealousy ritual. Adonai spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Benai Israel and say to them, Suppose some man's wife goes astray and is unfaithful to him, and another man has sexual relations with her, but it is hidden from her husband, from her husband's eyes, and her impurity is not de detected. Yet there was no witness against her, and she was not caught in the act. Then a spirit of jealousy overcomes him, and he is suspicious of his wife when she is impure. Or a spirit of jealousy overcomes him, and he suspects his wife, yet she is not impure. Then you should take his wife to the Kohen. He must also bring a tenth of an ephah of barley flour as an offering for her. He is not to pour oil on or put incense on, on it, because it is an offering for jealousy, a reminder offering, drawing attention to guiltiness. The Kohen is to bring her near and have her stand before Adonai. Then the Kohen is to take some holy water in a clay jar and take some dust from the floor of the tabernacle and put it into the water. Then the Kohen will have the woman stand before Adonai, loosen the woman's hair, put into her hands the reminder offering, the offering for jealousy, while in the Kohen's own hands are the bitter waters that bring a curse. Then the Kohen will have her swear under oath and say to the woman, if no man other than your husband has slept with you, and if you have not gone astray into impurity from your husband, may this bitter water that brings a curse not harm you. If, however, you have gone astray from your husband, and if you became 
impure and had sexual relations with a man other than your husband, then the Kohen is to have the woman swear under this oath of a curse and say to the woman, then let Adonai causes you to be cursed and denounced among your people, and Adonai causes your thigh to rot and your belly to swell. May this water, bring, which brings a curse, enter your body and cause your belly to swell and your thigh to rot. The woman is to say, Amen, Amen. Then the Kohen is to write these curses on a scroll and wash them into the waters of bitterness. The Kohen will then have the woman drink the bitter water, bearing curses, so that the water of the curses of bitterness enters her. The Kohen is to take the jealousy offering from the woman's hand, wave the offering before Adonai, and bring it to the altar. The Kohen is to take a handful of the grain offering and burn it up in smoke on the altar as a memorial offering. The Kohen will then have the woman drink, woman drink the water when she is made to drink the water that carries the curse. If she has defiled herself and has been unfaithful to her husband, it will enter her and cause bitterness. Her abdomen will swell and her thigh will waste away. She will be accursed among her people. If, however, the woman has not defiled herself and is clean, she will be free from guilt and be able to have children. This is the Torah regarding jealousy when a woman goes astray from her husband and defiles herself, or when a spirit of jealousy comes over a man and he jealous, jealously suspects his wife. The Cohen is to have her stand before Adonai and apply this entire Torah to her. The husband will be free of guilt, but that woman will bear her guilt. Chapter 6, Nazarite vows. Again, Adonai spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Benai Israel, and say to them, Any man or woman who desires to vow a Nazarite, Nazarite vow to be separate for Adonai is to abstain from wine and any other fermented drink. He is not to drink any vinegar made from wine or any fermented drink or any grape juice or eat grapes or raisins. All during his days as a Nazarite, he is not to eat anything from the grapevine, even the seeds or skins, all the duration of his Nazarite vow. No razor is to come on his head until the time of his consecration to Adonai is over. He is to be holy, and the hair of his head is to grow long. All the days of his separation to Adonai, he is not to go near a dead body. Even if his father, mother, brother, or sister should die, he is not to make himself unclean because his consecration to God is on his head. All the days of his separation, he is to be consecrated to Adonai. Now, if someone should suddenly die in his presence, there, thereby defiling his dedicated head, is, he is to shave his head on the day of his purification, the seventh day. Then on the eighth day, he is to bring two doves or, or two young pigeons to the Kohen at the entrance of the tent of meeting. The Kohen is to offer one as a sin offering and the other as a burnt offering. He is to make atonement for him because he sent through through the corpse. He must consecrate his head. On the same day, he will be dedicated to Adonai for the days of his Nazarite separation. He is to bring a year-old male lamb as a guilt offering. The previous days will not count because he was contaminated during his Nazarite separation. Then this is the Torah of the Nazarite when his, his period of separation is over. He must be brought to the entrance of the tent of meeting. He is to present his offering to Adonai, a year old male lamb without flaw as a burnt offering, a year old female lamb without flaw as a sin offering, a flawless ram as a fellowship offering, along with a basket of matzah cakes made of fine flour mixed with oil and matzah wafers spread with oil along with our grain and drink offerings. The Kohen will offer these before Adonai and present his sin offering and burnt offering. Then he is to sacrifice the ram as a fellowship offering to Adonai along with the basket of matzah. The Kohen will also present the grain and drink offerings. The Nazarite is then to shave the hair of his dedication at the entrance of the tent of meeting, and he is to take the hair of his dedication and put it into the fire of the fellowship offering sacrifice. The Kohen is to take the boiled shoulder of the ram and one matzah cake and one matzah wafer from the basket, and he is to place them into the hands of the Nazarite after he has shaved the hair of his dedication. The Kohen will wave them before Adonai in a wave offering. They are holy and belong to the Kohen, along with the breast that was waved and the thigh that was presented. Afterward, the Nazarite may drink wine. This is the Torah regarding the Nazarite who vows 
his offering to Adonai with regard to his consecration besides whatever else he can afford, he must fulfill the vow he has made in accordance with the Torah of his consecration. And here is where um, the part in Numbers where the Aaronic benediction, we also call it the Aaronic blessing, the priestly blessing, um, but this is the segment where you will find uh, the Aaronic benediction in Numbers um, chapter 6, beginning um, with verse 22. Again, Adonai spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron and, his, and to his son, saying, Thus you are to bless Benai Israel by saying to them, Adonai bless you and keep you. Adonai make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. Adonai turn his face toward you and grant you shalom. In this way they are to place my name over Benai Israel, and so I will bless them. And we do that at the end of every service. Chapter 7, Offerings of Tribal Princes. When Moses finished setting up the tabernacle, he anointed and consecrated it in all its implements, the altar and all the utensils, and he appointed and consecrated them. Then the princes of Israel, heads of their ancestral house, houses, they were tribal princes in charge over those who were numbered, uh, gave offerings they brought as their gift before Adonai, six covered carts and twelve oxen. A cart came from every two princes and an ox from each one of them. They presented them before the tabernacle. Adonai spoke to Moses, saying, Accept these from them to use in the service of the tent of meeting. Give them to the Levites to use as each man's work requires. So Moses took the carts and the oxen, and he gave them to the Levites. He gave two carts and four oxen to the sons of Gershon as their works required and four carts and eight oxen to the sons of Merari, as their works required, under the direction of Ithamar, son of Aaron, the Kohen. But to the sons of Kohath he did not give any, because their responsibility was carrying the holy items on their shoulders. When the altar was anointed, the princes brought their dedication offerings and presented them before Adonai, for Adonai had said to Moses each day, one of the princes is to bring his offering for the altar's dedication. Bringing his offer, offering on the first day was Nashon, son of Aminadab, from the tribe of Judah. And we're going to go through the, the offerings that were brought from each tribe. His offering was one silver plate weighing 130 shekels, one silver basin weighing 70 shekels by the shekel of the sanctuary. Both of them filled with fine flour mixed with oil as a grain offering, one ladle of 10 shekels of gold filled with incense, one young bull from the herd, one ram one male lamb a year old as a burnt offering one male goat as a sin offering and two oxen five rams five male goats and five male lambs one year old to be sacrificed as a fellowship offering this was the offering of nashon son of aminadab on the second day nathanael son of zuar prince of issachar brought his offering the offering he brought was one silver plate weighing 130 shekels one silver basin weighing 70 shekels according to the shekel of sanctuary, both filled with fine flour, mixed with oil for a grain offering, one gold ladle of 10 shekels filled with incense, one young bull, one ram, and one, one male lamb, one year old for a burnt offering, one male goat for a sin offering, and two oxen, five rams, and five male goats, and five male lambs, one year old to be sacrificed as a fellowship offering. This was the offering of Nathanael, son of Zuar. On the third day was the prince of the sons of Zebulun, Eliab, son of Helon. His offering was one silver plate weighing 130 shekels, one silver basin weighing 70 shekels, both according to the shekel of the sanctuary, both filled with fine flour with oil for a grain offering, one ladle of 10 shekels of gold filled with incense, one young bull, one ram, and one male lamb, a year old for a burnt offering, one male goat for a sin offering, two oxen, five rams, five male goats and five male lambs, a year old to be sacrificed as a fellowship offering. This was the offering of Eliab, son of Helon. On the fourth day was the prince of the sons of Reuben, Elazar, son of Shadur. His offering was one silver plate weighing 130 shekels, one silver basin weighing 70 shekels according to the shekel of the sanctuary, both filled with fine flour with oil for a grain offering, one ladle of ten shekels of gold filled with incense, 
one young bull, one ram, one male lamb, a year old for a burnt offering, one male goat for a sin offering, and two oxen, five rams, five male goats, and five male lambs, a year old to be sacrificed as a fellowship offering. This was the offering of Elazar, son of Shadur. On the fifth day was the prince of the sons of Simeon, Shelumiel, son of Zerashadai. Get tongue tied there. <laughs> Sorry about that. His offering was one silver plate wing, 130 shekels, one silver basin wing, 70 shekels, according to the shekel of the sanctuary, both filled with fine flour, flour mixed with oil for a grain offering, one ladle of 10 shekels of gold filled with incense, one young bull, one ram, one male lamb, a year old for a burnt offering, one male goat for a sin offering, and two oxen, five rams, five male goats, and five male lambs, a year old to be sacrificed. As a fellowship offering, this was the offering of Shelumiel, son of Zer Shaddai. And on the sixth day was the prince of the sons of Gad, El Eliasaph, son of Duob. His offering was one silver plate, wing 130 shekels, one silver basin, wing 70 shekels according to the shekel of the sanctuary, both filled with fine flour mixed with oil for a grain offering, one ladle of ten shekels of gold filled with incense, one young bull, one ram, and one male lamb, a year old for a burnt offering, one male goat for a sin offering, and two oxen, five ram, rams, uh, five male goats, and five male lambs, a year old to be sacrificed as a fellowship offering. This was the offering of Eliasaph, son of Duel. On the seventh day was the prince of the sons of Ephraim, Elishama, son of Emihud. His offering was one silver plate weighing 130 shekels, one silver basin weighing 70 shekels, according to the shekel of the sanctuary, both filled with fine flour, mixed with oil for a grain offering, one ladle of ten shekels of gold filled with incense, one young bull, one ram, one male ram, a year old for a burnt offering, one male goat for a sin offering, and two oxen, five rams, five male goats, and five male lambs, a year old to be sacrificed as a fellowship offering. This was the offering of Elishama, son of Emihud. On the eighth day was the prince of the sons of Manasseh, Gamaliel, son of Pedahazur, his offering was one silver plate, weighing 130 shekels, one silver face, and weighing 70 shekels, according to the shekel of the sanctuary, both filled with fine flour mixed with oil for a grain offering, one ladle of ten shekels of gold filled with incense, one young bull, one ram, one male lamb, a year old for a burnt offering, one male goat for a sin offering, and two oxen, five rams, five male goats, and five male lambs a year old to be sacrificed as a fellowship offering. This was the offering of Gamaliel, son of Pedahazor. On the ninth day was the prince of the sons of Benjamin, Abedan, son of Gideoni. His offering was one silver plate, weighing 130 shekels, one silver basin, weighing 70 shekels, according to the shekel of the sanctuary, both filled with fine flour mixed with oil for a grain offering, one ladle of 10 shekels of gold filled with incense, one young bull, one ram, and one male lamb, a year old for a burnt offering, one male goat for a sin offering, and two oxen, five, ma uh, five rams, sorry, five male goats, and five male lambs, a year old to be sacrificed as a fellowship offering. This was the offering of Abidan, son of Gideoni. On the tenth day came the prince of the sons of Dan, Ahazer, son of Amashadai. His offering was one silver plate, weighing 130 shekels, one silver basin, weighing 70 shekels, according to the shekel of the sanctuary, both filled with fine flour, mixed with oil for a grain offering, one ladle of 10 shekels of gold, filled with incense, one young bull, one ram, one male lamb, a year old as a burnt offering, one male goat for sin offering, and two oxen, five rams, five male goats, and five male lambs, a year old to be sacrificed. As a fellowship offering, this was the offering of Ahazer, son of Amishadai. <clears throat> On the eleventh day came the prince of the sons of Asher, Hagiel, son of Akran. His offering was one silver plate, weighing 130 shekels, one silver basin, weighing 70 shekels according to the shekel of the sanctuary, both filled with fine flour, mixed with oil for a grain offering, one ladle of ten shekels of gold filled with incense, one young young bull, one ram, one male lamb, a year old as a burnt offering, one male goat for a sin offering, and two oxen, five rams, 
five male goats and five male lambs a year old to be sacrificed as a fellowship offering. This was the offering of Hegel, son of Ephraim. On the twelfth day came the prince of the sons of Naphtali, Ahira, son of Enon. He, his offering, was one silver plate weighing 130 shekels, one silver basin weighing 70 shekels, according to the shekel of the sanctuary, both filled with fine flour, mixed with oil for a grain offering, one ladle of 10 shekels of gold filled with incense, one young bull, one ram, one male lamb, a year old for a burnt offering, one male goat for a sin offering, and two young bulls, five rams, five male goats, and five male lambs, a year old to be sacrificed as a fellowship offering. This was the offering of Ahira, son of Enon. This was the dedication offering from the princes of Israel for the day when the altar was to be anointed, 12 silver plates, 12 silver basins, 12 gold ladles. Each silver plate was of 130 shekels and each silver basin was of 70 shekels. Now altogether, the silver utensils weighed 2,400 shekels according to the shekel of the sanctuary. The 10 golden, golden, gold ladles filled with incense each weighed 10 shekels by the shekel of the sanctuary. Altogether, the gold ladle, ladles totaled 120 shekels. The total of the livestock for the burnt offering was 12 young bulls, 12 rams, and 12 male lambs a year old along with their grain offering. 12 male goats were sin offerings. The total number of livestock used for sacrifice of fellowship offerings was 24 oxen, 60 rams, 60 male goats, and 60 male lambs a year old. These were the dedicatory offerings for the altar after it was anointed. When Moses entered the tent of meeting to speak with, with Adonai, he heard the voice speaking to him from above the atonement cover atop the ark of the testimony between the cherubim. So he spoke with him. And that is the end of our Torah portion. Now, two weeks ago, we had Parashat Bamidbar, and that meant in the desert or in the wilderness, God commanded Moses to take a census of Israel. And this week's parasha continues with the theme of numbering the Levitical families as well as detailing of their duties. Um, and the Lord spoke to Moses saying, take a census, Neso et Rosh, that, that's the Hebrew uh, for saying, take a census of the sons of Gershon, also by their father's houses and by their clans. So the title to this week's parasha means to lift up or to elevate or to take up. Uh, was a term used to take a head count census of the children of Israel. In Hebrew, it reads, lift up the heads, Neso et Rosh. Neso is, is the longest portion in the Torah, Torah cycle. In it, God instructs Moses to specify the duties of each family in serving the community and the Lord. In this way, the burden would be distributed so that it would not be too heavy for just a few people. All too often the weight of the service of the Lord falls on the limited number of individuals willing to volunteer for the sake of the community, the kahila. This is not how the early Messianic community behaved, though. Believers had a communal lifestyle in which they helped one another and shared all things in common. Acts 2, verses 44 to 50. 45 says not now all who believe were together and had all things in common and sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as anyone had need. This concept of kahila or community often seems lacking in modern society. Many people today live in isolation and are concerned primarily with meeting their own needs and not those of the common uh, of, of others. Um, in Israel, kahila fed the ideology beho- behind the early kibbutz movement. However, even that has generally floundered in favor of a more capitalistic system. So helping to carry one's, one another's burden is a way of demonstrating our love for one another and is the fulfillment of the law of Messiah. Uh, and that's found in Galatians chapter two, verse uh, chapter 6, verse 2. We're all called to fulfill the Torah of loving one another by helping bear each other's burdens. This can be accomplished in practical ways by relieving those who are overloaded with responsibilities. It can also be accomplished through extending encouragement and comfort to those who carry heavy emotional burdens. 
Although practical help should not be neglected, Yeshua is an example to us in this respect. He was always willing to bear our burdens, and this is a source of comfort when people let us down or fail to do their part and leave us caring more than our share of the load. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 says, Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. In this parashat, those listed for service in the tabernacle uh, were actually all men. In respect of carrying the heavy equipment and guarding the tabernacle, uh, men were appointed, although women and children of the Levites were included in the protective buffer zone that God created around it. In that society, the women were primarily occupied with caring for the children, extended family, and household. Even in Orthodox synagogues today, women are, are, are not required to perform many other religious tasks and obligations that men do. They're not, not by requirement. Um, rather than be offended by that division of responsibility, we should understand that the traditional role in um, domestic duties were central to the life of the people. Um, and the, these, this was heavy equipment. So, so yes, women, <laughs> I know I couldn't have carried it. I'm a woman. <laughs> of course, there is some wisdom in that as well. Women are considered to have more of a natural connection to God and therefore are not required to participate in some of the religious activities that, that bring a person closer to God. So, um, that's a little bit of the duties. And this Torah portion um, indicates that perhaps the equitable division of duties found in the, the community is the answer. One of the greatest blessings is that of a whole people being in unity. Psalm 133, 1 to 2 says, How good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. It is like precious oil poured on the head, running down on the beard, running down on Aaron's beard. Now, the jealousy issue was brought up, you know, um, and wives being unfaithful to their husband rather than allowing a husband to stew in justified or unjustified jealousy. That jealousy was brought to the Lord in the form of an offering for her. She also underwent the ordeal of bitter waters to establish her innocence or, or guilt. No law given by Moses, however, says that God will only use women in their domestic roles. We do see in scripture uh, women performing a variety of roles including leadership, and Judaism also recognizes their callings as legit. So um, so this is why you have, you do have women pastors and, and, and such, you know, and we have um, Priscilla was one that was in, in a leadership role uh, in the New Testament, in the Brit Kadesha. The woman described in Proverbs 31 is highly esteemed for her wisdom and work ethic, at home, which was her primary responsibility, and also in the marketplace. In return for her efforts, she receives praise and blessings from her husband and children. So, um, the Nazarite vow was also um, addressed. It described the laws of the Nazarite, um, and they were not to cut their hair. They had an, uh, were to abstain from any any food grown on the vine, including wine. And many Nazarite vows are, were taken on a temporary basis, though some people lived their entire lives under the vow. The Hebrew root Nazir, nazir N-A-Z-I-R, means to be made separate. It is similar in connotation to the Hebrew word Kadosh, which means holy or set apart from the profane. A Nazarite is therefore separated from worldly activities to focus on serving God alone. One of the most Famous, famous Nazarites, yes. Um, as I was reading the Torah portion, I was thinking about him, was Samson. Um, and, and we know the story of Samson. The angel of the Lord instructed Samson's mother, even before his birth, to raise him as a Nazarite. So, yes. Um, and that's... We see later in Samson's life that he did not act with the humility and consecration required of his calling as a Nazarite. He indulged his fleshly appetites and married a Philistine woman against his parents' wishes, an act of rebellion that led to his downfall. And there, there is perhaps a curious connection between the law of the Nazarite and the law of the unfaithful wife, which were both discussed in this parashat. 
The laws of the unfaithful wife began with a Hebrew word, me'el, M-A apostrophe A-L, meaning trespass or embezzlement. This emphasizes the sacredness of the vows of marriage by revealing that any spousal, spousal unfaithfulness is a trespass. The first act of unfaithfulness t- toward God occurred in the Garden of Eden when Adam and Eve ate from the forbidden fruit. Now, there is some belief that the tree of knowledge was a vine with grapes, the ingredient of wine that a Nazir uh, vows not to drink. This helps to keep him holy because under the influence of wine or strong drink, he may be more vulnerable to the temptation of sin against God. Both the vow of marriage and the vow of the Nazarite are precious in God's sight as well. He expects us to keep our vows. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verses 4 to 6 says, When you make a vow to God, do not delay to fulfill it. He has no pleasure in fools. Fulfill your vow. It is better not to make a vow than to make one and not fulfill it. Do not let your mouth lead you into sin and do not protest. To the temple messenger, my vow was a mistake. Why should God be angry at what you say and destroy the work of your hands? And then we touched on the ironic benediction. Um, this portion of scripture provides the important priestly blessing called the Aaronic benediction or Berkat Kohanim. It is also known um, as the lifting of the hands because the priests release the blessing with uplifted hands. Oh, um, according to custom, the, the Kohen may not recite the blessing under the influence of alcohol or after the recent death of a close relative. Other conditions disqualify a Kohen for participating in the reciting of a special blessing, including a serious speech impediment, having taken a human life, blindness, or marriage to a disqualifying woman. So um, this this was the, uh, the strict uh, Judaism, um, in strict Judaism. A descendant of, of Aaron is forbidden to marry a divorcee. His wife must be a virgin. Um, Today, during biblical holidays, large crowds gather at the Kotel, Western Wall, to receive the priestly blessing from the Kohanim, the Jewish priests. Once assembled on a raised platform, the Kohanim recite the blessing with raised hands. Traditionally, congregational members cover their heads with their with their talit, t- 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 uh, the prayer shawl, and do not look directly at the Kohanim during their reciting of the benediction. A man's children, even if grown, will come under their father's to leap for the blessing as well. This simple but eloquent blessing is a benediction of love and peace consisting of the three best-known verses in the entire Torah. May the Lord bless you and, and guard you. May the Lord make his face shed light upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift, lift up his face unto you and give you peace. The blessing ends with what is considered by ancient um, ancient sages as the climax of all blessings, shalom, peace. The word shalom, however, not only means peace, hello, and goodbye, it also carries the connotation of wholeness, completion, and perfection. And rabbis contend that shalom is one of the pillars of the world and that a household cannot stand when it is divided through strife. Everyone seeks peace, but how can it be achieved and maintained it is not enough to simply receive the blessing of peace from a, from, a, from the Kohanim if we then go out and create strife. The Bible instructs us to live in peace with everyone as far as it depends upon us. Romans chapter 12 verse 18. In reality, much of the peace in our life or lack thereof does depend on us and not others. One major source of strife in our life is the tongue. Uh, rabbis believe we can have peace we're avoiding la shanhara, the evil tongue, which is sin such as slander, careless speech, or speaking in a rude manner towards others. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29 says, Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. Unity must be fostered through speech and action. And that is how we carry one another's burdens and fulfill the love of Messiah. The world around us is far from peaceful, and we know the world is upside down, chaotic as can be. Uh, and the prophets promised us a day when the messianic age arrives, that nation will not lift us up a sword against nation, and they will no longer learn war. 
In that day, even the beasts of the field will lie down together in peace. The wolf with a lamb, the leper with a goat, and the calf with a lion. A young child will have no fear even of playing with a cobra or a viper. And we saw that in Isaiah 11, chapters, uh, verses 6 to 9. When will this time come? When Yeshua returns to rule and reign in peace and righteousness. Until that time, we have peace if we allow him to reign in our hearts and lives. Peace is our very inheritance since Yeshua bequeathed it to us before he was executed by the Romans. My peace, shalom, I leave with you. He said that in John chapter 14, verse 27. It is a supernatural peace that passes all understanding. May we receive his blessing divine protection, favor, the light of his face, and all, also peace, wholeness, and completion in him. For Messiah himself has brought peace to us. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 14. So, um, that is pretty much, I'm just going to see if there's anything else that we kept, recap, just a recap. I think we covered the recapping on everything we covered. Just a little bit more on um, the, where the, the, the Nazar, to break down the Nazarite, Nazir. The word comes from the root N-Z-R, which means to dedicate or separate oneself, as in keeping oneself separate from grapes and wine. Another word uh, from the same root is nezer, N-E-Z-E-R, which means crown, consecration, and separation. And that is exactly what we read. And we see that, so that they cannot make themselves ceremonially unclean because the symbol of their dedication, the crown to God, is on their head. Throughout the period of their dedication, N-E-Z-E-R, nezer, they are consecrated, kadosh, holy to the Lord. Now, this level of sanctity is seen in that, like the high priest, the Nazarite could not contaminate him or herself by coming in contact with a corpse, even one in an immediate family member. Amos also underlined the holiness of the Nazarites, connecting them to prophets. I set up prophets from your, your sons and Nazarites from your young men. He said that in chapter 2, verse 11. It is believed that in the Messianic era, there will be no need for separation from worldly matters since there will no longer, they will no longer negatively impact us in, in the Messianic era. Instead, since we will abound in peace and beauty and our single-minded focus will be to know God, to love, serve, and worship him forever, this will fulfill the holiness of the Nazarite vow. And, um, There's a difference between the prayer and a blessing and the blessing of a righteous man imparts to us whatever God has intended for our life. For example, when Jacob blessed his grandchildren, and I said Ephraim, Jacob crossed his hands to give the greater blessing to Ephraim rather than Manasseh. This was not his personal decision. He was being guided by Adonai to give the blessing he intended for these particular tribes. Prayer, however, can actually change circumstances for the better. It can cause a sick person to recover, a single person to find their, their chosen, and a person plagued with poverty to have their needs met. Every prayer is to end with the phrase, may it be God's will. The ironic blessing does act both as a blessing and a prayer. The Kohenim blesses, blesses with God's peace, protection, favor, and grace, but as a prayer, it can also change our circumstances for the better. Now, I know um, this is also, uh, this benediction is also used in Christian churches as well. We are going to now go into the half Torah portion. And from the half Torah portion, we're going to be reading from the book of Judges, chapter 13, 1 to 35, the birth of Samson. Tonight, Israel again did what was evil in Adonai's eyes, and Adonai gave them into the hands of the Philistines for 40 years. Now, there was a certain man from Zorah, from a Danite clan, whose name was Manoah. His wife was barren and, and bore no children. Then the angel of Adonai appeared to the woman and said to her, Behold, now you are barren and have not borne children, but you will conceive and bear a son. Now, therefore, be careful not to drink wine or strong drink or eat any unclean thing, for behold, you will conceive and bear a son. 
let no razor come upon his head, for the boy will be a Nazarite to, a, to, to God from the womb. He will begin to deliver Israel from the hand of the Philistines. Then the woman came and told her husband, saying, The man of God came to me, and his appearance was like the appearance of the angel of God, very awesome. But I did not ask him where he was from, nor did he tell me his name. He said to me, Behold, you will conceive and bear a son. So drink no wine or strong drink, and eat nothing unclean, for the child will be a Nazarite to God from the womb to the day of his death. The Manoah entreated Adonai and said, My Lord, please let the man of God whom you have sent come to us again and teach us what we will do for the boy to be born. God listened to the voice of Manoah, and the angel of God came again to the woman as she was sitting in the field, but her husband Manoah was, was not with her. So the woman ran quickly and told her husband and said to him, Look, the man that came to me the other day has appeared to me. So Manoah got up and followed his wife. When he came to the man, he asked him, Are you the one who spoke to the woman? I am, he said. Then Manoah said, Now may your words come, up, come about. What will the child's rule and his and his what will be the child's rule and his mission? The angel of Ananias said to Manoah, Let the woman abstain from all that I mentioned to her. She should not eat anything that comes from the grapevine, or drink wine, or strong drink, or any eat any unclean thing. She must observe all that I commanded her. The Manoah said to the angel of Adonai, Please let us detain you so that we may prepare a young goat for you. But the angel of Adonai said to Manoah, If you could detain me, I would not eat your, your food. But if you present a burnt offering, then offer it to Adonai. For Manoah did not realize that he was the angel of Adonai. Then Manoah asked the angel of Adonai, What is your name so that when your words come to pass we may honor you? But the angel of Adonai said to him, Why do you ask for my name? It is, it is wonderful. Manoah took the young goat with the meal offering and offered them on the rock to Adonai, and he did something wonderful. As Manoah and his wife were watching, for it came about when the flame went up from off the altar toward heaven, that the angel of Adonai ascended in the flame of the altar. Manoah and his wife were looking on, then they fell on their, their faces to the ground. The angel of Adonai appeared no more to Manoah, or to his wife, then Manoah realized that he was the angel of Adonai. Manoah said to his wife, We will surely die because we have seen God. But his wife said to him, If Adonai had desired to kill us, kill us, he would not have accepted a burnt offering, the meal offering from our hand, nor would he have shown us all these things or let us hear such things at these, as these at this time. Then the woman bore a son and called his name Samson. And so the boy grew up and and I blessed him. The Ruach and I began to stir him in Mahanadan between Zora and Eshtael. Now that's all uh, we're going to be reading about the story of Samson. Of course, we know um, there is much more to uh, the story of Samson, but this is the connection between the Torah and the half Torah. So we're gonna um, we're gonna recap on both at this point, and then we will close out this segment and take a short break and then come back with the Kadasha, altar call and Holy Communion and then close out um, Shabbat for this week. Again, the name um, of this this parasha was Nasa, Naso, uh, N-A-S-O or N-A-S-S-O and it means elevate or take up or lift up um, and this really meant uh, a head count. Completing the head count of the children of Israel taken in the Sinai desert, a total of 85, eight, I'm sorry, 8,580 Levite men between the ages of 30 and 50 are counted in a tally of those who we will be doing the actual work of transporting the tabernacle. And I communicated to Moses the law of Sota, uh, which was the, the wayward wife suspected of unfaithfulness to her husband, also given as the law of the Nazarite, who forswears wine um, or anything from 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 the vine, from the vine, um, lets his hair his or her hair grow long, and is forbidden to become contaminated through contact with a dead body. Aaron and his descendants, the company, are instructed 
and how to bless the people of Israel as well. The leaders of the 12 tribes of Israel each brought uh, offerings for the inauguration of the altar. And although their gifts were identical, each is brought on a different day and is individually described by the Torah. Now, we just read in the half Torah, describes the birth of Samson, a lifetime. He was a lifetime Nazarite. Um, Manoah and his wife, members of the tribe of Dan, had been childless. And one day an angel appeared to Manoah's wife telling her that she's going to give birth to a child. And this child was to be a lifetime Nazarite. In addition, the angel instructed her to abstain from all forbidden foods to a Nazarite, such as wine or ritually impure foods, and from the moment, from the moment she would conceive. And the angel further informed her that her son would, would save, the, save their people from, from the Philistine oppression they were enduring at that time. And the soon-to-be mother told her husband the good news, and he entreated Adonai to send his messenger again. They were unaware at the, at the time that the messenger was an angel, and Adonai did send the angel again, and he repeated his instructions. Manoah and his wife then invited the angel to partake of a special meal they would prepare, but he declined. Instead, he encouraged Manoah to offer the goat he wished to slaughter for the meal as a sacrifice to God. The angel then dis then ascended in the flame. He he ascended in the heavens in the flame that devoured the sacrifice. And Samson was born, and he grew, and and Adonai blessed him. And that is the end of the Torah and the half Torah. Father God, we thank you for for your powerful word. We thank you for your blessing. We thank you for all that you have done to bless your people, to bless us and those that you will, will bless in the future. We give you all our praise and all honor and glory belong to you. We pray this prayer in the most mightiest name of all, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. Amen and Amen. Take a short break and we'll come back. Uh, with the Brit Kadashah and part two of Shabbat service. <laughs> 